just a couple of weeks ago on the program, said we were close, trending in the right direction, I believe were his exact words. A man who a lot of people thought couldn't get the job done is joining us right now. He is Conor McGregor's longtime agent. He is the head man over at Paradigm Sports Management. He is the one and only Adi Attar, and he is on the phone, our first guest here in our brand new set. How exciting is this? Adi, are you there? I am I am here, Ariel. Congratulations on the new setup. Well deserved, my friend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So, Adi, we have a lot to talk about. And let's start here. Are you surprised that it went as smoothly as it did? Are you surprised that, you know, this is actually a done deal? No, you know, uh, I, I think when you believe in something and you work hard um, towards towards that goal, um, I don't think you're necessarily surprised. I think there's always a sense of relief and there's always a sense of excitement, but uh, I'm not surprised. You know, it's something that we believed in and something that I felt that made sense for all parties, and, and I'm just happy that uh, we got there uh, as fast as we did, and um, and credit goes to, to all parties that, that were involved in, in this deal and, and uh, really looking forward to August 26th. Um, when, when I spoke to Connor in January in England, he was kind of saying, all right, you know, if I'm being honest, end of the year, early next year, here we are mid-year, August. Um, did you er- originally think that that was a more you know, realistic time frame? And did it kind of go quicker than you thought? Maybe not surprised that it eventually got done, but that it actually moved along as quickly as it did. Um. Yeah, I think I, I, I was pleased to see that it moved along as quick as it did. That that's I think that's a, a better um, uh, characteriza- characterization of of how it all went down. I, I definitely was surprised um, that we went with the earliest date of all the different dates that we were discussing. Um, uh, but nonetheless, I think it just the way everything played played out, and with all the other uh, you know the other events that were trying to compete with us and. I think just this has just made the most sense, and um, you know I think the fans are 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 in for a great treat sooner than they had expected even. So I think everybody wins uh, with with this date of August 26th. Were, were you were you pushing for September October? Like like was this part of you guys having to say okay fine we'll take the August date for various reasons? Like like was that a concession that you had to make? I think everybody was wanted September initially, um, but we had, you know, an August date and we had an October date as well. So, I think again, once everything played played out, you know, we just felt that uh, August was a, was a better date, and you know, it's something that we we uh, we we listened to. The other side, you know, wanted. Uh, um, wanted uh, th- this date, and I think it was a suggestion that was made by them, and and I think um, and we thought it was a good suggestion given kind of all the other moving parts, and and uh, and here we are, and now we're, we're getting ready to go out there and make history on August 26th. Uh, details like 154 pounds and 12 rounds, things like that. Um, the size of the box. By the way, do you know what the size of the ring is going to be? I believe it's 20 by 20. Uh, okay. I, I, I don't expect it to be any smaller. W- were these sticking points at all, or did that go rather no, seamlessly as well? No, no it, went, it went rather seamlessly. Wow. I think both guys are, are ready to get in there and compete, and so that was um, that was exciting kind of to see that that, that wasn't necessarily ever going to be an issue, which is which is good, you know. Um, uh, but, but I think um, f- for the most part, you know, I think – um, you know, it, it really didn't matter where that was going to end up at. You know, I think that both guys kind of know, knew that there was going to be a range, and and um, at the end of the day, I think this is just going to make it uh, the best competition po- possible, and and really create as, as even uh, as a playing field as you can, and and uh, which in in turn just creates for better competition that the fans can enjoy. Does Connor get pay per view points? Connor's well taken care of. <laughs> so is it true that there's a confidentiality? Like, like, can you tell us, will he make nine figures? Connor's well taken care of. <laughs> this will be the most that he'll ever make in a fight. Is that is that at least fair to say? I, I, I You know, listen, I think that's fair to say. I think that, you know, Dana said some comments about what he expects both guys to make. I said, I think those are fair comments, and, and I think everybody's happy. Everybody's going to be very happy in this situation, so... 
Um, what about the idea of having him fight August 26th so that he can come back and fight at the end of the year? Dana was saying he feels really good about that. Is that in line with what you guys are planning as well to have him come back and do an actual MMA fight? Because as you've probably heard, people are afraid he makes all this money and never comes back to the UFC. Uh, Con Connor is a very ambitious young man. That's a key word, key two words, young man, right? And he, he has a lot more um, that he wants to accomplish athletically and as a businessman. So he definitely wants to fight again in MMA. And, and, you know, if all things go well and he feels good, then it could potentially happen at the end of the year. There's no guarantees, but it's definitely within his plans to come back and compete again in the UFC. Um, do you know any information as of right now, as far as the promotion, you know, what fans expect, you know, is it going to be like a world tour type of thing? Is it going to be a press conference? Is there going to be minimal promotion kind of like Pacquiao Mayweather? What could you tell us? Cause a lot wasn't said or even asked to be quite honest on the conference call on Wednesday. Yeah, I think, um, there's, there's a lot of that that's, that's being planned. I think a lot of that's still kind of taking shape and hoping to kind of, um, finalize that this week. And I'm sure, Mr. Ellerby and Mr. Espinoza will be speaking on some of that as well. Um, I, I see that they're on, they're on your show as well today. So. But note who was first, it's Audie. Fine. Note who came on first to yeah. set the table, all right? <laughs> well, I appreciate that. It's 1.30 a.m. out here in China. I know. So it's, it's, it's definitely... Um, uh, past my bedtime, so to speak, but I couldn't miss this this <laughs> inaugural show. Yes, and the honor that you bestowed upon me to to the to be the lead off uh, batter, so to speak, of the show. So I appreciate that. This is a very big deal, and I I appreciate you recognizing that. What do you say to the people, Audie, who say that this is just a money grab? It's a sham. He has no chance. It's a disgrace. Why is he doing this? Why is the UFC letting him do this? What is the response to this criticism? Hi, haters. <laughs> uh, same people that said it wasn't going to happen, you know, so you can't, you can't pay attention to all that negativity. If you paid attention to all the people that, that told you you can't, then, you know, you're not going to be living out your dreams. And so my, my thing to them is, okay, tune in and watch and we'll see. And so I think everybody that's, that's doubting him, uh, that's a mistake. This is a young man that, that, Knows how to throw, knows how to throw them hands. Is has all the skills that he needs to go in there and compete at the highest level. So on August 26th, I'm confident he's going to go out there and shock the world. Did Lorenzo Fertitta have anything to do with making this fight? I think Lorenzo Fertitta has been instrumental um, in in a lot of different ways as it relates to Connor's career. And yes, he was very instrumental in in, in putting all us together to, to to really get everybody to talk and and get on the same page. When when you know, I think everyone started to see that this was a real viable uh, business proposition. So um, you know, I have a lot of respect for Lorenzo, and and I, I know he's. Um, you know, exited, but nonetheless, I think this is still something that he's very passionate about and cares a lot about the sport and cares a lot about the UFC and, and cares a lot about Connor. So I think it was, uh, it was really, um, special for me to see that he was, um, interested enough to try to at least, um, put all parties together. So, so we could do some good business. Uh, I made the point at the beginning of the show that, one of Connor's greatest attributes is that he has impeccable timing. He had great timing as he was coming up to almost foresee the fact that Lorenzo was about to sell. So Lorenzo kept giving him more rope, more rope, more rope to do whatever he wants. And then when the new owners come in, they give him rope to headline MSG and, and, and go for the second belt, all that, and then some. But do you also think that his timing was impe impeccable in the sense that 2017 has been a bit of a down year thus far for the UFC, and so they have to kind of make this fight. In the past, two years ago, they're doing very well. They don't do this fight. They have been presented with this idea in the past with Anderson and Roy, etc. nothing as big as this one, but they've always been sort of steadfast in their belief that they are not going to co-promote or loan out talent. But because they sort of you know need to get things going monetarily, loan, debt, all that stuff, and then some, they, they, they kind of had to relent. Do you feel like that's part of the reason why this is happening? Yeah, you know, I I, I don't know, and I, I I think more so when you see you see the public interest in this fight, and you see kind of the 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 reaction from the public. I mean, that's an indicator. That's an economic indicator. Does that play into all the other elements that you pointed out? I don't know. I it's that's something that they that they know. That's their business. 
I do know that they're smart businessmen. So if the indica- indicators are all pointing to, to, uh, to, to, towards a mega event that they could be a part of, you know, I think they just did smart business. They just did good business. Um, so I think it was more so um, the the public interest, the growth in public interest, and the serious interest that Floyd had, Floyd had, as well as Connor, that that made it all go right. I think that's that's why we're we're now heading into what arguably could be the biggest fight in combat sports history, August twenty sixth, two thousand seventeen. Can you go on the record? What do you think it does, pay per view wise? Man, I've been wrong in the past. Yes, I've undershot, I've overshot, so I really don't know. But I mean, I think if you look at all the different experts, they're pegging it to the to the Mayweather Pacquiao fight, and you know, if it if it beats that, then I think I think we've we've done a great job. Wow, um, that that I mean, do you think do you really believe that it does over four million? I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, I mean, I've been in Asia now for the last yeah. week. The interest is huge. Whether I was in Singapore, I was in Malaysia, now I'm in China. I mean, it's huge. This is real, you know. And so, this is a real global event. And and um, I, I just feel like you have two strong personalities, two strong brands, and and Connor and Floyd, and and then you have the people, the naysayers. And I think that even those people are going to tune in just to see, you know, either either they are naysayers about the event, either they dislike Connor, they dislike Floyd, but nonetheless. You know, I think that's that's good. You know, I think let them tune in and, and find out for themselves. Who's the A side? I mean, I think we think we're the A side. And I know Phil, Floyd has said that he feels he's the A side. Either way, I think you have two marquee guys, and I don't think you have. You know, even the Floyd Manny fight. You know, I don't. You know, that was that was not only anticlimactic, but. You know, I don't think Manny brought as much as Floyd in that fight. Whereas in this fight, yeah, it's a whole other character that he's facing, right? So I think that's that just creates for much more powerful synergies in this dance. Who's walking out second, though? I don't have those details. Okay, was that a sticking point? Mm, I don't think so. not. Not that I, it was never a point for us. So I say, who gives a crap? He walked out first when he fought Eddie Alvarez. Screw it. Just take the money, fight, win, and get out of there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was never an issue for us. All right, I'll tell you that. Could you tell us what, in hindsight, was the biggest sticking point? Like, was there something that you just felt like, uh oh, you know, we may not get over this, and then you eventually did something with the UFC any maybe negotiation you're going to have you're going to have back and forth in any neg- in negotiation you know um so you know ultimately you you can't you can't you can't get stuck in in certain situations and and not try to work through them you know so i think for the most part you had two professional parties in 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 us in, in the UFC and and we 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 were able to work through a lot of issues and hats off to to Dana and Hunter Campbell and, and, and their team over there. Um, you know, we, we, we really, we really rolled our sleeves up and got to work and, um, uh, we, we got something done that a lot of people didn't think we were going to get done. I think at Dana at one point said yeah. that we couldn't get done. He said he was going to be a starter for the New England Patriots yeah. before we get the deal done. Uh, for the record, he said backup, Patriots, but as, as equally absurd. The backup. Okay. Yeah. Well, shoot. Hey, he may be getting his contract soon. That's a good thing. Um, do, so, do you, um, so, so with that said, would you say that this is the greatest accomplishment of your professional career thus far, getting this fight done? in a short amount of time when it seemed like everyone was doubting you? I mean, of course, I think it's, it's one of the, uh, definitely a milestone in my career. I think it's going to be a milestone in Connor's career. Um, but uh, neither, neither of us feel we're done at all, you know? So, uh, we just got to keep our head down, keep grinding, keep working hard and, and keep shocking the world. How does it work from a sponsorship standpoint? Like, does he does he wear Reebok here? Does he get to do his own thing? How does that work? Well, we let a lot of our deals lapse, and so there's a lot of open categories that we've been negotiating oh, with different brands, including Reebok. Oh, so, snap. So he's a free agent? We'll see how that all plays out. Is he a free agent as uh, far as... I, he, he's currently a free agent as, as it relates to athletic apparel, yes. What? We are... We're still in discussions with with uh, Reebok as well as other brands, so uh, we'll see how that all shakes out. Can he wear whatever he wants? Like, like if he signs, let's, I'm just throwing it out there with Nike. Can he wear Nike for this fight? 
if he signed with Nike, he could wear a Nike for this fight. That's that's accurate. Yeah. That isn't so. So he is now. So the, I can't even imagine the offers that are coming your way now for this. He's a free agent for this. That might be your greatest coup of, uh, of them all. It's it's uh, definitely a great opportunity for Connor <laughs> and, and any any brands that we we uh, decide to align with. Wow, I love how subdued you are. Maybe because it's one thirty a.m. over there, one forty. Probably. Probably, probably. Uh, now I, I have to ask this. Thanks, kicking in. You, 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 you. I mean, you also represent a lot of great fighters, and Tony Ferguson is one of them. How, how are you handling that situation? What does Connor now actually getting this fight mean for him? Do you have any idea? I think for Tony, he's just waiting for that opportunity. I mean, Khabib was supposed to be that opportunity, didn't happen. Nate then was was there was talk that it was going to be Nate, and apparently UFC couldn't get him to 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 sign off. Um, you know, now I think the thought is um, Khabib's supposed to be back after Ramadan, um, but there's no confirmation, so we're still kind of waiting on that. It, part of me thinks that too they were hoping that the Eddie Alvarez Dustin Poirier fight ended in a different way. You know, that they created another contender, but that that went down the way it went down. They're rematching. Uh, and rerunning that one back. So I think for him, it's just a, a unique situation where, um, you know, it, Tony would have fought anybody um, they put in front of him if, if he was going to be paid the same. or and if, and if they can't pay him unless it's an interim or title fight, then that's what he wants. So, um, you know, it's been his position the entire time, and he hasn't, he hasn't changed that. So I think for him... Um, it's really just about um, figuring out, um, you know, who's going to really step up. And he really wants it to be sooner rather than later. So, uh, you know, my my assumption is is if Nate doesn't necessarily sign on, then it's going to be, could be, you know, come come this fall. But um, we'll see. You know, with no confirmation yet, but we'll see. Um, yeah, obviously you have some other. Huge fights coming up. I got Lorenz Larkin fighting for the Bellator welterweight title next weekend. I'm going to get to fly home for a day and then off to New York to watch him uh, make his Bellator debut and and hopefully um, bring home some gold. That's uh, that's an exciting fight for me to go and see kind of Lorenz go and do his thing for a new promotion. And and then one of our younger fighters, uh, James Gallagher, is also fighting on that. Yes. Um, that uh, that that card as well. So and there's also a lot of other forthcoming fights. You know, Gunnar Nelson and Charlie Ward are fighting in Scotland, and you got Chris Weidman fighting in Long Island. And so killing it. We really have some 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 fun fun forthcoming uh, events um, for a lot of our clients. So exciting times ahead. And I would be remiss if I don't congratulate you on getting the Megan Anderson deal done. It was announced this morning, our time, that she is fighting Chris Cyborg for the now vacated title at UFC 214, Anaheim, California. This is insane. How difficult was it to get her out of the Invicta deal to sign now with the UFC? Well, I think a lot of uh, other moving parts kind of played to our advantage. Um, we, we we thought that that was a good matchup. and we've been, We were pitching the UFC, and I don't think they necessarily saw it initially, but... Um, you know, given kind of what happened with Jermaine and 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 the fact that really um, I don't think they could they they had anybody willing to step up to fight Chris. Um, you know, Megan wanted it. You know, Megan was is the um, Invicta 145 champ. Cyborg was the Invicta 145 champ. So it only made sense for them to kind of meet up and 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 uh, and and go at it. I mean, Cyborg's an amazing fighter. Um, Megan's young. She has a lot of potential, um, a lot of upside, and uh, I think that uh, she's gonna just uh, really take advantage of this opportunity. And and uh, I'm excited because it's in our backyard in Anaheim, so um, get to see her not only UFC debut but uh, fight for a title. So I'm um, hoping that we could add another another uh, strap to to the team. Before I let you go and uh, finally go to bed. Tuck yourself in, all that stuff. Um, I'm putting you on the record here because you know everyone's asking me, will we talk to Conor McGregor before this fight? The world wants to know. They want, you know, we've been there from the beginning. Blueberries, not a pot to piss in. Let's not forget. I think we were with Conor before you were with Conor, if we're being honest here. Can you go on the record on this program, eight-year anniversary, new studio, that we will be speaking to the man before the fight? What do you have to say? I know Conor 
uh, respects you. Okay. Uh, so I think that is definitely is definitely uh, it's definitely something that we could uh, entertain. <laughs> uh, I just, I, the man himself has to approve it. You know? Oh my gosh! And, and right now, right now, he's not talking to any media because why? He's really busy training. Well, he's just busy training, and then when he's you know on his days off, he's enjoying his time with his family. And you know, I don't I don't blame him. I don't blame him. He's he's right now locked and loaded. Um, you know, and and then he he has other businesses that he's focused on, including his own multimedia company. So right, uh, you know, the MacLife dot com. Sure, okay. sure, yes. Uh, if you're not uh, macking, I believe you are not stacking. Okay, can you give us an official prediction then? What is the official prediction? Uh, look, I think we're going to stop him. I think I think Connor's going to knock him out. But um, you know, you got to tune in August twenty sixth and find out yourself. Well, I can't wait. This is so exciting. Congratulations on getting it done. Congratulations to you and the whole team for doing what a lot of, I know, managers in the business thought you couldn't get done. A lot of promoters, a lot of fans, a lot of media thought you couldn't get done. Uh, A major coup for you guys, a major feather in your cap. So enjoy it. Congrats. Enjoy the ride. And thanks for doing this so late over there in China where you are. I really appreciate it, Adi. Not a problem. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Congrats to all parties involved, and more more importantly, congrats to the fans because you guys made it happen. So I'm one of you. I'm excited to watch this go down August 26th, and um, and you know, let's let's get talking. I, I'm excited to kind of hear uh, the people that are really going to watch the fight, not not just the haters, but uh, you know what the predictions are. Uh, I know I know they're going to be a, there's going to be a lot of t. TNT and TNT and and Floyd uh, fans and there's going to be a lot of uh, notorious and, and Conor McGregor fans so um, let's let's uh, let's all enjoy it it's going to be history right before us thank you Adi appreciate it talk to you soon thanks Ariel thanks all for right. having me on there he is Adi Attar the agent for one Conor McGregor 